understand as being shot down in another society. We are the society of status quo. We want to fit in. We want to be considered normal, whatever that is. I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> but we want to be liked. We want to be popular. We don't want to be part of the mean girls. We want to be the popular girls. Jesus gives us three reasons not to be afraid. He wants to offer us comfort in the face of persecution. And this is what he tells us in our lesson for today. First, he encourages us, encourages us to remember who controls the light. Who created the light and who controls the light. You know, evil loves darkness. Evil thrives in darkness. Evil just goes haywire in darkness. They love it. Evil people use darkness to try and disparage and discredit God's people. But we have been promised over and over again in Scripture that the one who is in charge of the light, the perfect light that dispels all darkness, is on our side. And in His perfect time, in His perfect will, light will overtake the world and darkness will be destroyed once and for all. There will be no nighttime in heaven. We will not have to deal with darkness again. So what have we been taught and what do we believe? We're told to shout it from the rooftops. The things that we have learned in the light are, be, are to be shouted from the rooftops as divine truth. Because one day in God's perfect timing, there's going to be constant light. And everything is going to be revealed. All those questions that lie in the darkness of our hearts are going to have answers to them. Right now, the truth of God and our salvation through Jesus Christ needs to be shouted from the rooftops. The second thing that God promises us is that our opposition has limited power. Jesus says that those who oppose you can only damage your body. They can only kill you. And we know that we only have this body for a short period of time. Thank heavens. Because this one's falling apart. <laughs> I'm ready for a new body. God has promised us that no one in the darkness has power over our souls. Only God does. And we're also promised that God will always protect our souls. We're going to die anyway. So we can't worry and shouldn't worry about what happens to this soul body. And finally, remember this. As Kojak used to say, who loves you, baby? <laughs> who loves you? In God's compassionate love for us, nothing can touch our souls. Nothing can destroy God's love for us. From the very beginning of Genesis 1 to the last verse in Revelation, over and over and over again, we are reminded that God's compassionate love can never be taken away from us. Paul says it so beautifully when he says, neither height nor depth nor breadth nor width nor depth nor nothing, nothing, no angels, no demons, no principalities, nothing of this earth and nothing in heaven, absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God that is Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Who loves your baby? God loves your baby. And Jesus uses sparrows as a symbol of something in God's creation that for those then and for us now has very inconsequential value to show us just how much God does care for us. He says not even a sparrow can fall to the ground without God knowing it. A sparrow. You can buy two sparrows for a penny and that's how invaluable they and inconsequential they are to us. But to God, not even a sparrow can fall to the ground without God knowing it. And if that can happen, think about how valuable you are. As the pinnacle of God's creation, how valuable you are. And he goes on to say, every hair on your head is numbered. It's not counted. I can count the hairs on your head. I can count more quickly on some than others. <laughs> but I can count the hairs on your head. But the hairs on your head 
God put there with a number on them. God numbered them. That's how important and unique we each are. But you know, mixed in with all those images of swords and family feuds is this simple idea. And this is what I want you to hear today. When we choose to follow God, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we can't do it halfway. He says you're either all in or you're all out. It's not a part-time job, it's a full-time job. You're either with me or against me. Amen. Jesus wants us to understand that following Jesus isn't so much about finding where God is in our life, but where we're called to be in God's life in His kingdom. And He in, offers us the invitation to take up our cross and follow. And we're not too far from Easter that we forget this morning or misunderstand what it means to take up our cross. We all know the imagery and the association that goes hand in hand with the cross. Jesus makes no bones about what He expects from us. So it should come as no surprise that we're going to face trials and tribulations if we're going to carry the cross of Jesus Christ, as we're told to do. What Jesus wants us all to understand is that like the disciples, we're being sent out into the world. Jesus was just getting ready to send these disciples out two by two. And he earlier in this passage, He says, if you go into a town, preach the Word of God, and if the people don't open their hearts to it, Shake the dust off your sandals and move on to the next one. Amen. But Jesus was sending them out and He sends each and every one of us out. We're being sent out in the world to do the work that Christ began. You know, He can only send people out who are going to do service. And just like the disciples, He wants our perspective to be the right perspective. Like us, the disciples were going out into the world and they were being commissioned. And Jesus said, go out and heal illnesses. Go out and raise people from the dead. Go out and cast, demon, cast out demons. In other words, show people in your community the love of God and don't let them live in darkness any longer. If you've been given the gift of healing, use that gift. If you know there is someone that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, raise them from the dead by introducing them to your Savior, Jesus Christ. You don't have to beat them over the head with the Bible to do it. You do it by your life. And what you say to them and the way you say it. In other words, show the love of God to people who live in a world of darkness. The perspective of the student must be changed into the perspective of the prophet. For three years, the disciples had sat at the feet of Jesus and they had basked in the light. They had been hanging out with Him while He was feeding thousands with a couple of fish and a few loaves of bread. They had been there when He raised people from the dead, when He healed sick people, when He made people see again. They were just eating that up. Now He's saying, now it's your turn. You've got to go. You can't hang on to me any longer. Go out. And here's your perspective. That's what we've been charged with today. We can sit here in this church and we can worship and we can praise and we can have that student's perspective. But when we walk out of these doors, we have got to have the prophet's perspective if we're going to be successful. When we carry the light of Christ out into our world, we have to have that perspective, the perspective that Jesus is teaching us about this morning. Don't let this morning's lesson trouble you. Central to our understanding of this passage is simply to make sure our perspective and our priorities are straight and right. If we're choosing to follow Jesus, we're stating that nothing is more important than Him in our lives, and that's how we have to live. We must take up our cross and carry it with us as we face a world of darkness and opposition. But never fear because God is with us. His compassionate love protects us. One of the last concerts I went to see before Tim and I got together 
was Miss Patty LaBelle. I love Patty. I love me some Patty LaBelle. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> she had that wonderful song, and she opened her show with it. Most of y'all are probably too young to really appreciate Patty LaBelle like I do. I knew her when she was skinny. <laughs> As Patty LaBelle sings, I'm feeling good from my head to my shoes. I know where I'm going and I know what to do. I've tidied up my point of view. I've got a new attitude. Jesus just wants us to go out in the world with his attitude. Amen. Following Christ is about a new attitude and a new perspective. So I charge each and every one of us this morning to go into this world without fear because we're going out with God on our side. Amen. 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 Thank <laughs> you.